Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to uh, today's IAMP One World Mathematical Physics Seminar. Um, it's a great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Martin Fras from UC Davis, and Martin will tell us about projections, uh, parallel transport, and adiabatic theory. So Martin, we are very much looking forward for your talk. Uh, okay, thank you much all for the introduction, uh, and uh, thank you, um, thanks to organizers for doing this seminar. And uh, this is, you know, I decided to give a talk about adiabatic theory. So, you know, on the zoom out uh, perspective, this is this is simply a talk about adiabatic theory, uh, sort of a general overview. It's not based uh, on a, any particular work, but uh, over the years uh, I worked on adiabatic theory lots of with many many people. So some of them are listed here. Uh, I learned adiabatic theory from Yossi Avon, and then I, you know, worked on adiabatic theory with many, many other people. Um, so what, what is the plan of the talk? Um, that would be like a very, very short overview um, of, of uh, you know, what I'm going to talk about. And then there would be one part about projections, one part about parallel transport, and uh, one part about adiabatic theorem. Okay, overview. So as I was already discussing, you know, uh, this talk is about adiabatic theory. So it has, you know, two other parts, but the but the but the uh, main part of the talk, the main focus is adiabatic theory. But I wanted to present it in a in a in a uh, in a way that is that is maybe slightly. Um, that, that you know, even if you know adiabatic theory, it may be slightly new. And if you don't know adiabatic theory, then 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 hopefully you can at least uh, get out from the talk with with knowing what is what is adiabatic theory and what adiabatic theory studies. And so the the point of view I want to stress uh, about adiabatic theory is the is the connection uh, uh, with the perturbation theory of projections. So how adiabatic theory uh, is connected to the perturbation theory of projections. Uh, and of course, please, at any point, you know, if you have a question, just stop me and ask. Uh, um, since this is sort of a general, you know, I'm giving a general talk about adiabatic theory, I don't have any particular um, material that I really want to finish. So just please uh, jump in and ask uh, if you have any question. Okay. Uh, so, so first, what is, what is adiabatic theory? So the, the so the what what uh, you know we study in adiabatic theory uh, is this is is equations of this type. So you have a vector. So it's a it's a differential equation uh, where the unknown is a vector x um, uh, uh, of t, and it has some it is generated by some um, slowly dependent generator L. Uh, that depends on time t slowly, uh, and it depends on time t slowly because epsilon is is small. So we study this equation in the limit where where, where epsilon goes to zero. And uh, later I will give you you know um, more concrete example by example uh, setting uh, of of uh, what um, space the x belongs to and what exactly is l. Uh, yeah, you know, at the at the for 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 the for the moment here, um, I will not go into you know a specific setting. Now 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 um, now in 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 this formulation, you you can see uh, you know um, here uh, clearly that uh, this is if epsilon is small, this is changing slowly, but it's actually more convenient and more typical to work in what is called slow time. So we made a change of variables where we call s equal to t epsilon. And then the equation uh, looks like that um, epsilon times derivative of x in s is equal to l, it depends on s acting on x of s. And so this is the basic equation that adiabatic theory studies uh, in the limit uh, epsilon goes to zero. And, uh, and uh, if, you, if you look at this equation, uh, there are you know the the the, the it, it decomposes the space into into part that 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 is in slow motion, and uh, and uh, any vector that is inside the kernel of this operator is in a slow motion, because if it is in the kernel, so if you know I have a vector x that is inside the kernel, l on x is equal to zero, 
means its time derivative uh, would be equal to zero. So, so it, it means it moves slowly. Uh, and these are, so these are any vectors um, in kernel. Uh, on the other hand, if I have something in range, this means that uh, L on X is not equal to zero. And uh, then the time derivative, if I divide by epsilon is of order one over epsilon. If epsilon is small, the time derivative is very large. So, uh, so inside the range, um, inside the range, the vectors are, are, are um, moving very fast. Uh, you can think of a spinning top, you know, as a, as a, as an example. Uh, you can think of a spinning top as an example. Uh, you know, if you have a spinning top, uh, the, 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 any vector on the, on the axis of the top, uh, is, is moving very slowly, but but uh, but uh, you know the the perpendicular vectors are are, are moving fast. Okay, so so um, so so how adiabatic theory is connected to projections? Uh, anytime you have this kind of decomposition to 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 range uh, of uh, uh, of LS and kernel LS to this uh, fast and slow um, uh, parts of the space. And then there is corresponding family of projections that I would denote P of S, and uh, that projects uh, on this on this kernel. So, so it uh, it projects um, so P of S projects vectors on the kernel in the direction of the range. Uh, and uh, and uh, and this family of projections, uh, you know, corresponds to this decomposition of space, and and uh, and it is the motion of this family of projections. Uh, that that is uh, that that is the key thing uh, in adiabatic theory. So so um, so so it is exactly this motion of this family of projections that corresponds to this decomposition. Uh, that that is the that is the key ingredient in adiabatic theory, uh, and and why uh, adiabatic theory and uh, and uh, perturbation theory of projections are are so closely connected. Okay. Uh, just just to finish the the outline, I think origins of all of this, uh, uh, all I'm going to talk about, uh, essentially all the topics are is in the work of Tosio Kato, uh, both perturbation theory of projections and study of projections, and first mathematical work on adiabatic theory. Uh, they they all originate in Kato's work, and if you want to write, uh, you know, um, Barry Simon wrote the. Uh, recently a review very, 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 uh, you know, it's a great reading of Kato's work. It has part one, part two, and you can, you can, you can there, there, there read a lot about, um, you know, uh, Kato's work. Uh, and, and lots of it is about, uh, uh, both about uh, projections and adiabatic theory. Okay, so that's the, that's the end of overview. That was sort of just to give you like a, a, a structure of like uh, why, um, uh, you know, uh, how projections connect to adiabatic theory and how we would go from projections uh, to, to adiabatic theory. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I will then, you know, start with part two and these are projections. Okay, so, so uh, you know, as a definition, if I have a, you know, a Banach space B, so I, I start with some Banach space, uh, a bounded operator uh, P on a Banach space is a projection if, if the square of that operator is itself. So if you square that operator, you get itself. That's what is called projection. Now, anytime you have a projection, uh, you can look at the kernel of this projection and the range of this projection. And, uh, and then that, that induces a decomposition of this Banach space uh, into a direct sum of the range and the kernel. So 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 um, so decomposition of a of a of a Banach space into uh, into two subspaces. Uh, so each projection induces a decomposition of a Banach space into two subspaces, and you can go also other way around. So if you have a decomposition of a Banach space as a direct sum of two subspaces, uh, then there exists a unique projection such that the range of this projection is uh, one of these uh, subspaces. And the kernel is the other of the subspaces. Uh, if this decomposition is continuous, uh, then this projection is going to be bounded, 
and I will only talk about that case. I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about uh, about any other case. So, so there is one-to-one -one correspondence between 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 this uh, geometric picture of the composition of uh, space into subspaces uh, and projections. Uh, so that's a projection, and I will now follow with lots of examples of projections. So, uh, so in two by two example, if you if you take a matrix uh, two by two matrix P. And um, that, that looks the following way. Then for any number A, uh, complex number, if this is a projection on C2, or real number, if this is a projection on R on R2, uh, is a projection. You can you can check that P square is equal to P. And uh, um, for for A not equal to zero, this projection is um, not orthogonal uh, in the standard uh, you know Euclidean um, uh, uh, metric. For a equal to zero, this is this is an orthogonal projection. So so this is a very sort of like a concrete example, and the the, the remaining examples would be would, would be would be more uh, would be more abstract. So another example, uh, uh, you know, very relevant for quantum mechanics. If I have a normalized vector psi in a Hilbert space. Uh, then, then, then the, then the one-dimensional projection, or rank one projection, that is, um, you know, obtained by a, as a Brab C C, uh, uh, is a is an orthogonal projection on the on the on the line that is that is that is generated by this vector. Okay. Uh, so far, uh, uh, these projections were not. Um, originating from any other object and now I will start generating projections that start from other object. So again in quantum mechanics very important uh, example if we have a Hamiltonian H um, on a Hilbert space so so I start with a Hamiltonian uh, then there is something which is called ground state projection that made and doesn't need to make doesn't need to exist and this is a this is this is a projection P uh, that that uh, is is eigen projection for the Hamiltonian so HP uh, is equal to EP. This E is just a number that's energy, uh, such that uh, if you subtract E from the Hamiltonian, it's positive, and P is the maximal projection that that satisfies these two uh, these two equations. I would call the ground state projection. Uh, it you know th that doesn't need to exist non-zero uh, ground state projection, uh, uh, but if it exists, uh, it's it's very important um, uh, in quantum mechanics. And the Hamiltonian has a gap G. Uh, if this H minus E, uh, you know, is, is zero on the on the on the on, on the ground state projection, but is uh, greater than equal than some uh, constant G on the orthogonal part uh, of the space. And by this P pop, I would I would always denote one minus P. So uh, throughout the talk, uh, it may happen. Uh, uh, repeatedly that you would see uh, p perpendicular and that just refers to one minus p. Uh, some more examples. So um, so uh, let L be a bounded operator on the Banach space and uh, gamma a closed curve uh, in, in, uh, in complex numbers that does not inter intersect the spectrum of L. So in this picture, this is two such gammas. So there is such gamma. And this this blob here that the spectrum of L. So everything, uh, and I have a gamma that doesn't intersect the spectrum of L. And then I then I can um, you know um, then I can make a projection using using uh, using Klein resolvent. So I integrate uh, over the curve gamma uh, of the resolvent, and I need to uh, multiply by the proper normalization. And this is this is again a projection. Uh, if the if the if, if gamma is separated, uh, you know, by some fixed distance uh, from the from the spectrum, so here it would be here it probably would be this uh, distance g. So if there is a if there is a positive distance g uh, from the curve to the spectrum, uh, so I will call such uh, spectrum such distance a gap of of of, of this projection. Uh, it's 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 a gap. It's not unique. Uh, you know, I can I can make a different uh, you know curve that you know would be maybe closer or farther away from the spectrum. 
Okay. Uh, and the last example, sort of connected uh, to this decomposition to, to fast and slow that I was um, discussing uh, in the overview. Uh, so if L is a, is a generator of a contraction semigroup, uh, and we assume that there is ex that that the composition to you know the Banach space to the kernel and the range uh, of this of this generator uh, holds, uh, which doesn't need to always hold, and uh, then the corresponding projection P that project uh, you know that projects on 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 the kernel of L project on the stationary solutions of this equation. Uh, so far, there is no um, there is the, 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 everything is constant in time the generator. Um, Simply because you know the projection projects on everything that is in the kernel, and if it is in the kernel, then then, then if it is multiplied by L, we get zero, uh, and and those vectors um, uh, are the stationary solutions uh, of this equation. Uh, just as a remark, you know one possible option that such equation holds uh, is if the Banach space is reflexive and uh, and uh, uh, you know and the, the kernel and the range together generates uh, all the space, then, then, then you would have such decomposition. OK, so uh, so these were a few examples of projections. And uh, here is just one, uh, you know, I think uh, really lovely result about projections. Uh, and that is just a result purely about projections that, that, uh, that doesn't, uh, you know, uh, come with other ingredients. So, so, so if, if you have two projections PQ uh, on a on a Hilbert space uh, in this setting, uh, you can ask, you know, can I connect them with a unitary? Can I can I find a unitary that 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 uh, that uh, that connects them? Uh, and uh, you know, in, in finite dimension, uh, you you know, uh, you you can you can understand what is the obstruction in finite dimension. The obstruction uh, is the is the is the dimension of the range of these projections? Uh, you know, if they if they if they have different rank, uh, uh, then there can't exist the unitary that would that would that would move one to the other because because such unitary preserves rank. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's more complicated uh, once you have uh, uh, infinite dimensions. But but there is actually a lot of theorem that gives you like event only conditions exactly tell you what you need to check and to see whether such unitary exists. Uh, first written by Wang Du and Do uh, in in two thousand nine, and then 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 I proved by Barry Simon in two thousand seventeen. And it says the following: that if you have a two projections on a separable Hilbert space, uh, and uh, now I think it was supposed to be orthogonal projections. Uh, then there exists a unitary uh, that that uh, that in fact actually works for both of them. So it uh, not only connects uh, one to the other, but it works both ways. Uh, even only if a uh, 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 dimension of of uh, two spaces that you that you take as a uh, eigenspace of p minus q with eigenvalue one and eigenspace of p minus q with eigenvalue minus one, if the dimension of these two spaces is equal, it can be infinite. That's okay. Then they still can be connected. And this is the only obstruction. And if 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 this dimension of these two dim Hilbert space two spaces is the same. You can find such a unitary. Uh, let me let me give you two notes uh, about this. Uh, so some notes. Uh, maybe one note uh, uh, is that is that again going back to to the work of Tosio Kato. Uh, Tosio Kato wrote such a unitary. So so if you if you look at uh, into his book, you would find such a unitary that does this. And the unitary that that uh, uh, that Tosio Kato wrote that 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 does this job uh, looks like this. So uh, then there is uh, one minus p minus q squared to minus one half. Uh, it may not be obvious that it, that even this is a unitary, but uh, it is a unitary and it does this job. Uh, uh, however, uh, it can only be defined if this is well defined. So there is this. Uh, uh, there is this inverse of one minus the difference of p minus q squared, and that's well defined only if the norm of p minus q is less than equal than one, or strictly less than one. So, so it's a unitary that 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 uh, that uh, that connects uh, between these projections p and q. Uh, it it just doesn't work always. Uh, and uh, and maybe another uh, uh, you know. Um, 
uh, another another note. Uh, this difference, uh, the operator p minus q, uh, 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 plays a very important role in in uh, in in index of projections. Uh, that was that was developed by by uh, Yossi Avron, uh, Barry Simon, and Eudis uh, uh, in, in in some sense, uh, you know, uh, the, the 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 result, uh, you know, was not explicitly mentioned in their paper, but uh, but uh, but uh, you know, uh, can can be can be uh, read off already from uh, the construction of index of projections. Okay, uh, so this was just you know. Um, uh, not necessarily, you know, it would not have a direct implication on 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 a, on a adiabatic theory. I just wanted to show you that that already in the theory of projections, there are beautiful results uh, that that you know just talk about projections themselves uh, 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 without without any much additional structure. And okay, that was all I wanted to say about projections. So uh, you know, maybe I should stop if there are any questions. Uh, so far, I don't see any questions. So I think you can continue. Okay, so then uh, we go to parallel transport. So in the previous result, uh, uh, we had just only two projections, P and Q, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, the question was, can we go from uh, projection P to projection Q? Uh, in adiabatic theory, uh, we will deal with uh, with uh, families of projections that depends continuously. Uh, on, on S. So they are sufficiently smooth as a function from the interval 0, 1 uh, to the to bounded operators on, on the Banach space. Uh, and and, uh, and, uh, and so now we would have like the whole curve. So, so instead of having just two projections previously, we, were, we are going from P to Q in a single move. Now we would uh, you know go from P0 to P1 by, by some continuous pass uh, of projections. Uh, and one uh, you know, very important uh, equation. So if you want to remember just one equation, if, you, if there is one equation you want to remember from this talk. So one uh, 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 equation to know about such move of projections is that they always move in such a way uh, as to make a minimal change inside their range. So, so um, that's just how projections move. And that's, that's what is encompassed uh, in this equation. So if you want to just remember one equation, I think this is a, this is a you know, good equation to remember. Uh, how you get this equation, maybe I can prove something. Uh, so uh, this equation uh, follows from the basic, uh, uh, from the basic equations from projections by differentiation. So if you differentiate uh, this equation by, by ds, you get, uh, P dot S, P S plus P S, P dot S is equal to P dot S. And now you sandwich it from both sides by P. So now we sandwich this from both sides by P. So I would add one P here, another P here, another P here, another P here. And now I have uh, twice uh, uh, the same on the left-hand side and once the same on the right-hand side. So this implies that p s p dot s p s is equal to zero, and that's what I wanted to get. Uh, and again, like, what does it mean? Uh, it, it means that you know, if you move a projection uh, smoothly, it would it would it would change in such a way as to as to make a minimal uh, change inside its range. Uh, now, now, now. Going back to this question of, of, of how these projections move and whether we can, you know, uh, you know uh, whether we can describe such a motion by a unitary. And this is referred to as parallel transport in the adiabatic theory. And the parallel transport generator is an operator K of S uh, such that uh, uh, it satisfies uh, the equation that, that, uh, that uh, the, the projection itself, so the family of projections, satisfies the equation that time derivative of this projection uh, satisfies the equation that is that is uh, generated by the i times commutator with this generator k of s. Uh, and uh, and the result of uh, Toshio Kato uh, from fifties uh, is that if you have some smoothness, so if that p s is, is differentiable, 
then you can write, uh, uh, then there exists one particle k of s that is given by the commutator of uh, p dot this p multiplied uh, multiplied by by i, and that this this is a generator of parallel transport. So 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 anytime you have some smoothness of, for this for this family of projections, you can write uh, you know there exists one such generator of parallel transport, and you can write it very directly. You can write very direct formula for this for this generator. Uh, now, now, if you look at if you compute the norm of this generator, so if you compute the norm of Ks, uh, then th that's you know, um, but then that's um, uh, uh, that's immediately bounded by the norm of uh, p dot and p with maybe a factor two there. Uh, but but so 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 it works so it works very well uh, if the norm of uh, of of p dot uh, and the norm of p are bounded. So if you if you are in the case where where where, where, where um, this this projection is is c one uh, in in the in the norm topology on the space, then this then this then this uh, adiabatic generator uh, works works very well. Uh, but but recently there were there were there were uh, problems where, where uh, this is actually not the case where the norm topology is not the not the right topology of the space where you have still some continuity of this projection, but it's not a it's not the norm continuity, and uh, so I want to mention one other generator of parallel transport. Maybe I should you know go back here um, uh, and and stress that uh, you know. Such a generator of parallel transport is not unique. Uh, it it only you know it only prescribes that 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 this family P of S is a solution. So it only tells you how it acts on just like a one uh, you know object on the in the in the space. So you can imagine that there is lots of non-uniqueness about this generator, uh, and there are many many of them. And I want to mention another one that 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 recently got very. Um, very important in application. Uh, so, so suppose that the Hamiltonian that now depends on S is a uniformly gapped family of Hamiltonians uh, with with P as the ground state projection. So, so that means that you know the, if I subtract the ground state energy, uh, this would be greater than equal than some gap G that doesn't depend on S. That's that's part of this uniformly that this G doesn't depend on S times the orthogonal projection. Uh, and um, then a proposition that goes to Hastings and then in 2005, suppose that this Hamiltonian is differentiable, uh, then there exists a super polynomial decaying function WT, uh, so that if you uh, make an appropriate, uh, um, appropriate uh, you know, averaging uh, of, of the, the time derivative of S, uh, then, then, then such object is a generator of parallel transport. So it again satisfies the same equation that we had on the previous slide. Uh, it's a, it's a, it, but it's a different generator. And and um, and what is a, what is a good generator? What, what is a very good about this generator that that in the thermodynamic limit where exactly you lose this norm continuity, uh, this generator behaves well. So it has a well-behaved thermodynamic limit. Unless the previous um, generator uh, that was written by 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 Kato. Uh, okay, so um, that's all I wanted to say about parallel transport. Maybe I should a little bit recap parallel transport in adiabatic theory. Um, simply refers to the way how these projections move along a continuous path, and it is generated uh, by a generator of parallel transport. Uh, there are many such generators. One was written by Toshio Kato, and now, you know, just recently, um, there is there is another one um, uh, that that got very important in in applications uh, to to many body systems. Okay, uh, so I go to the sort of main part, and I will now talk about adiabatic theory. And as I want to, as I wanted to, uh, you know, um, as I was stressing. I want to I want to stress the connection of adiabatic theory uh, to 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 uh, perturbation theory of projections, and so that the motto I wanted to like uh, you know uh, highlight is that you know uh, if you get a smooth family of projections, then there is an adiabatic theorem. 
So, 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 so there is this like very ultimate connection between between having adiabatic theory and getting this most family of projections. And I want to, you know, explain on a, on 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 examples how, um, uh, uh, you know, what 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 I mean by this model. Uh, so again, to to remind you, what is the setting of adiabatic theory? Uh, we have a uh, we have some family of bounded operators on the Banach space. And we studied the adiabatic equation that epsilon times um, uh, x dot uh, of s. So x here is an element of the Banach space. Uh, uh, is equal. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a it's a time dependent. Uh, uh, it's a it's a linear differential equation uh, with time dependent generator l of s. And we want to study this in the limit where epsilon is small, so where epsilon goes to zero. And just as a notation, I will denote the propagator of this equation by u with index of epsilon of s. So, so this means that the solution of this equation uh, uh, x of s is obtained by acting with this propagator on the on the initial uh, on the initial value. Uh, okay. In in fact, uh, throughout the talk, maybe later I will say a lot of notes uh, about about other cases. But throughout the value, uh, throughout the talk, L would be Hamiltonian. So, so this would be Schrodinger equation. The 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 only uh, only uh, examples I will give would be about Schrodinger equation. Um, and maybe if I have time, I, I will say uh, I will say some remarks about other works where this is not a Schrodinger equation. So uh, adiabatic theory in quantum mechanics. So in, in quantum mechanics, uh, this L up to this factor of I uh, is a Hamiltonian. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so for a family of Hamiltonians that depends on S from zero to one, we get the Schrodinger equation where the Hamiltonian um, is time dependent. So it depends on time through this parameter, through this parameter S. Uh, and now, uh, you know, if I look at the spectrum of this Hamiltonian, so the 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 most you know the historically the first setting for adiabatic theory uh, is the setting where the spectrum of the Hamiltonian uh, looks like uh, so I have a I have some pieces of spectrum maybe there is something discrete and uh, maybe there is another piece of spectrum and uh, and now I have a curved gamma uh, that that. Uh, uh, that 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 I can all put in a gap, so it's a this gap case, and I look at the projection. So corresponding to this uh, to this to this curve gamma, there is projection on this part of spectrum. Uh, and I, for simplicity, that that is not important. Uh, that the gap is important for this theorem. I, I assume that that gamma is a curve that does not intersect the spectrum of H S for any S. So I assume that there is one fixed gamma, which which exactly imposes that there is a gap. And then I have the corresponding uh, uh, projection spectra projection PS on on all the spectrum that is inside this curve gamma, so on this part of the spectrum. And then the theorem of Cato uh, from fifty one is suppose that the Hamiltonian uh, has a certain amount of smoothness, uh, so twice differentiable. And then this projection is twice differentiable, so so that so if we have a gap, then the projection inherits the differentiability from the Hamiltonian. Uh, and and the time evolution, so this was supposed to be epsilon. Uh, and the time evolution generated by this equation uh, is such that if you start inside the uh, range of this projection, you 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 all the time uh, keep to be inside the range of this projection in time s up to some errors of order epsilon. So so so. Um, so, or in other words, the time evolution of this projection, which is obtained by sandwiching P uh, by U from left and right, uh, is close to the to the to the projection uh, at time s as it moved. Um, so, so this is sort of the basic um, or the original theorem, uh, adiabatic theorem um, uh, in 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 quantum mechanics. Uh, and uh, uh, but in the meantime, there were there, there were there, 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 we have like a you know lots of lots of other adiabatic theorems that I you know in few of them I want to I want to present. 
Uh, and so this is this is you know often when you hear about this theorem, uh, the 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 focus is on the gap. The focus is on the analytical parts of this theorem, uh, where 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 you where you uh, focus that that um, on on the on the on the on the feature that there is a gap between. Uh, the part of the spectrum that you look at and the other part of the spectrum so this will be the gap g uh, but I, I i want to i want i don't want to focus on that um i, I want to convince you that, that that that's really not the key part of adiabatic theory and i think the first theorem that that shows this that this is not a key part of adiabatic theory uh is what you know uh, is the adiabatic theory uh, theorem without gap condition by by avron and elgar 99 so uh, in the same setting uh, we have the same um, uh, uh, time-dependent Schrodinger equation uh, with the time-dependent generator of HS. And uh, now we now we look at the uh, now we sort of normalize we, we look at the projection uh, PS on the kernel of this of this Hamiltonian. So so uh, so if you want uh, at each time as we subtract energy so that we think of a situation where, where at e equal to zero. Uh, there is there is some eigenvalue. Uh, uh, it doesn't need to be a ground state eigenvalue, but it can. And then there is maybe AC spectrum above. This is just to you know show um, uh, show uh, the kind of situation that that you that 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 this has in mind. Uh, that 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 this energy that this eigenvalue is exactly at energy equal to zero all the time. You can just shift the energy. Uh, that, that 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 that's not important. Um, uh, it's just convenient to describe the projection as the projection on the kernel of the Hamiltonian. And then the theorem says the following. Suppose that the, this Hamiltonian uh, uh, is, uh, is sufficiently smooth, at least C1. Now you need to assume that the projection is smooth. It doesn't come, it doesn't come, you don't have a gap. It doesn't, it doesn't come for free. So now um, we need to, we need to um, follow the motto that we need a smooth projection, smooth family of projection. And we need to assume that the, that the projection is C1. But then you have an adiabatic theorem. Then, then the time evolution uh, of any vector that, that, that starts inside this projection will, will be inside this projection as the projection moves. Uh, it's, it's, only, uh, it's only small. It's all, only of order, order one. So it goes to 0. You, you can't give any, any, uh, any bounds. So you can't say. Um, how fast it approaches zero? That that it can it can be as slow. Uh, uh, it can be as slow. Um, you know, it can be arbitrary slow depending on the setting. And I think this is the first type of theorem I, I, uh, that sort of shows uh, this, this idea that that adiabatic theory is not about gap condition. That's maybe the analytical part of the theory, but 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 really it's about you know. Uh, 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 having a smooth family of projections. And if, if you find a smooth family of projections uh, that is connected to your problem, uh, you, 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 you can get an adiabatic theorem. And I want to show you more examples of that. OK, so another example. Uh, adiabatic theory for uh, quantum spin systems. And uh, you know, I'm very sorry. I, 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 I can't give you a full setting for the adiabatic theory for spin systems. That would be a lecture by itself. Uh, so, so if you don't know what are quantum spin systems, I am very sorry. Hopefully, you can at least get some kind of like a spirit from this. Uh, uh, but I can't give the full setting. So, so, so we have a, a d-dimensional graph, uh, uh, and and the uh, and the family of Hamiltonian H H S that is a family of gap spin ham system Hamiltonians. So, so, so spin system means that I have a, a certain amount of sides. Uh, and on each of the side, there is a spin. That is what is referred as a spin system. Uh, and uh, and uh, I have a, you know, uh, now I have this PS that, that would be the ground state projection of this Hamiltonian. Now, now uh, as I was somewhat already advertising when I was talking about this quasi elliptic projection, this is the case where this, uh, if you move this projection, uh, you don't have, uh, you know, um, good norm uh, uh, differentiability. So, so, so if you start moving this projection, uh, and you look at what is the norm of p dot s for 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 moving this projection, this would generally scale with the volume. So this would be the amount of sides 
and and it would simply blow up as you as, as the volume goes to infinity and why this is the case this is the case because if you move the spin at each side so you go from the uh, black to red on each side the the change is additive and you know you add all these changes you know overall it, it just goes as a volume uh, so so this projection uh, is, is not such family of projections would generically not be continuous if you genuinely move change the p at each side uh, uh, this would not be continuous in the infinite volume limit but it still feels that it's continuous in some other topology in some kind of local topology that it should be continuous uh, and and so this is this is this is this is what this uh, theorem that we that we proved this that this Bachmann and Deruk in in 2016 gives you uh, uh, that if you know uh, you have uh, sufficient smoothness and I will come back to it but I want to first say what is the result then 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 you still have that the time evolution of the projection uh, at time from time zero so this was supposed to be at zero. Uh, subtracted uh, from the projection at time s uh, is small, but only in the local topology where you compute trace of this object with a local operator OX, where this operator OX is an operator that 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 acts only on a some kind of finite uh, 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 subset of the lattice. You know, maybe X is just these two spins. Maybe this is X. Uh, uh, so uh, maybe X is an operator that acts only on two spins. Uh, so that uh, and you can't get better. So 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 because this family of projections is is uh, is not continuous in the norm topology. You can't hope for adiabatic theorem in top, in, a, in, a, in in norm topology. But you can get adiabatic theorem uh, in a local topology that that only cares about about local objects. I want to make a remark about this smoothness. So if you if, if I go back to uh, what theorem of Avron Elgard or theorem of Kato, it requires only C two differentiability and this C one differentiability. While this theorem crucially uh, requires D plus two differentiability, where D is the dimension of the lattice. Uh, uh, and 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 I, I think what I want to say, I want to just point out how the how the changing the topology in which in which this projection is continuous influences the analytical parts of the theorem so 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 it's not only oh i changed topology and you know i have the same theorem no it's crucially the analytical parts are very very different and you need much more smoothness to get adiabatic theory and corresponding to that the 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 the, the, the proof machinery uh, 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 is 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 uh, it is very different uh, to, to prove a theory like theorem like this. Martin? Um, yes. So this constant C prime is independent of lambda, but it, it depends on S time, right? Uh, it depends on S, but, uh, correct. But I, 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 I mean, yes, but if, if, if S is from zero to one, then, you know, oh, on, yes, on a yes. compact okay. interval, uh -huh. you, can, you can just take a okay. super move okay. of this constant. Okay. You don't have to care about that. Yes, hmm. you, you you need to care about this if you if you care about going, you know, in some adiabatic theorems. Maybe if I have time, I would I would mm -hmm. I would mention them in notes. You care about intervals s that are not that are not compact that maybe go mm -hmm. from minus infinity mm -hmm. to infinity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you would care because then 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 it may spoil as as uh, as, as 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 gets large. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, and the last adiabatic theorem I want to mention uh, is is in the context of this order. So uh, let me start with uh, you know uh, Anderson model with a perturbation. Uh, so we consider random um, Hamiltonian on Z B again on a lattice, uh, and uh, and the uh, you know the spectrum of H uh, if I if I think of something like like uh, like a uh, Nearest neighbor hopping uh, plus on-site random uh, random random potential. Uh, so so it almost surely looks that it has intervals of of uh, of absolutely continuous spectrum. Uh, this 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 uh, what is called mobility gaps, and these are intervals filled by dense uh, pure point spectrum. Uh, 
and uh, and so 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 this is how the how the Hamiltonian without the perturbation could look like. And now we consider perturbed Hamiltonian. So we 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 take this Hamiltonian and we we add the perturbation W. Um, and you know soon we will do adiabatic theory for this kind of Hamiltonian. But I first want to point out what is is um, what what happens here just just for the for the projections for the spectrum of such Hamiltonian. So, so, so there is a beautiful result by Delmar, Dario Makarov and Barry Simon and independently by Gordon in 94. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it only holds for, uh, for uh, dimension one. Uh, and uh, I, I, think, I think actually it, it, it I, 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 okay, I wrote it here for W that is, that is stately acting on side one. So, so, um, so I have, um, so I have a, a just just a delta of one is just equal to one at side one and zero everywhere else. So it's a stately perturbation on one side, but I think it actually holds for any compactly supported perturbation. But but okay, I I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, so 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 uh, so 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 we take W to be this perturbation dimension equal to one. Uh, and and then uh, j log so so the interval of localized spectrum it, it is an interval exactly where, where the unperturbed Hamiltonian had dense pure point spectrum. Uh, and you know then the, then the result states that the spectrum of this Hamiltonian and it, it, you know if you add the perturbation uh, in, in, in this in this interval where previously you had dense pure point spectrum, it is purely singularly continuous, on a G delta subset of zero one. So if you, as you start uh, changing S and, and, and you know, uh, changing the perturbation, uh, the spectrum inside this interval constantly changes from pure point spectrum to, uh, to uh, purely singularly continuous spectrum. So, so what does it mean? This means that if you take a spectral projection, uh, that 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 includes this interval or its spectral projection on this interval, it just can't be continuous. Uh, it 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 constantly changes uh, type of 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 the spectrum that you are projecting it, and 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 you know it's a, it's not a projection that that can be continuous. And and you know this may look like a disaster for the adiabatic theory because because even you know uh, well certainly we don't have a gap here. It's it's just filled with dense pure point spectrum. And on top of that, we don't even have a continuous projection. It's 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 badly discontinuous. Uh, and yet, you know, yet 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 one can uh, do uh, an adiabatic theory on this setting. Uh, and I will first, you know, state the result, but then I will uh, explain that in fact uh, there is a continuous projection. So it's not a spectral projection, but there is indeed a continuous projection. Uh, continuous family of projections associated with the problem. And that's why uh, uh, one can do adiabatic theory. So, so we consider this Hamiltonian that this, 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 this H uh, of this form, uh, we assume that it's sufficiently smooth and, and it, starts, uh, uh, it starts smoothly. Uh, we assume that these are range R operators. So, 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 uh, so they, they don't act on distances larger than R. And the H, uh, uh, this is a random operator, is statistically independent on these distances bigger than R. So the parts of H that are distance bigger than R are statistically independent. And we assume that there exists this, spec this interval J log with localized spectrum uh, such that you have a fractional moment uh, 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 estimates this some, this some Q in zero one. So here Q is zero one, so that this fractional moment uh, Estimates uh, hold true uh, for for this for this Hamiltonian age without perturbation. Uh, and now we fix uh, uh, Fermi energy inside uh, inside mobility gap. That's the physical situation that that uh, is most important for physics. And we look at the projection on everything that is below uh, uh, below this Fermi projection. Uh, and uh, and now the result um, and that you know one of the results uh, in the paper uh, this this Alex Lagarde and Patrick Deruk uh, uh, a recent paper 
is that if you look at the strong limit, it, it's crucially a strong limit, it would not home in the norm limit, uh, of, of the time evolution of this, of this Fermi projection from time zero to time s, then this is equal um, to, to, uh, to the Fermi projection at time s, uh, as epsilon and beta goes to zero. So you need to simultaneously go to zero with the adiabatic parameter and beta, and you need to maintain certain relations. So you need to keep epsilon uh, to not be too small, uh, but, but it can be very small. It can be exponentially small in minus one over beta. Uh, and it also can't be too large, but this is the, the upper bound is just artificial. Uh, it, it's just the methods we are using really focus on getting epsilon as small as possible. Uh, they, 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 so, so this you can improve by different methods. And this P1, P2 are some coefficients that, that mainly depends on this Q and the dimension. Uh, so, uh, so, so this is the result, but, but I think actually the, the, I think the real punchline and the, or this, for this talk is, 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 is uh, in what is, the, what is the idea of the proof, how, 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 how one gets this. So, so, so what, what is the idea of the proof? So, so, um, so but again, a picture of this situation where I have, uh, you know, uh, this is this is the spectrum of H that starts this this some uh, localized spectrum in this interval J log, and maybe some absolutely continuous spectrum outside of this interval. And now we put it on a torus. So, so this result was uh, uh, this result was in ZB is in the it was in the full space, uh, partly because that the Easiest result to write, uh, uh, but 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 all proofs actually work by looking at the finite but large torus, and then sending this torus to infinity. So we look at the torus of 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 some size that is exponential in some sp small parameter l, and I will explain uh, the the meaning of this l in a, in a in a in a second. And I claim that there is a smooth family of projections uh, that that are nearly spectral projections. So they, they are not exactly spectral projections, but they are near spectral projections of this Hamiltonian. So if you commute with the Hamiltonian, you get something that is exponentially small in this parameter L. And on top of that, and uh, you know this may be a mouthful to read. So, so there are near spectral projections and I want to understand what spectral projections on what they are. And I think it would be easiest on the picture. So, so, so there is an uh, interval that we called J minus around this energy E. And then there is interval uh, J plus uh, inside this energy E. And this Q is such a spectral projection that it includes up to some small error, all the spectrum inside the interval J minus. And on the other hand, this projection Q is included in the spectral projection on J plus. So, so, so it, it leaves, uh, you know, it has, it, it, it has all the spectrum around E in some small interval and, and it, in itself it leaves uh, uh, in, in some bigger interval around that energy. Uh, um, so, so that this projection Q uh, uh, and, this, and that this interval delta needs to be chosen correctly uh, uh, to, for, for, for this to work. And, that the correct choice is L to minus D over Q, but to understand that correct choice, one will need to go to, uh, you know, details of the analytics. Um, so the last thing I want to say, what is this spectral projection Q and what is this parameter L, they are connected. So I have this torus, uh, and we chop this torus. So this torus is of the size E to the square root of L, and we chop it into a sufficiently good region of size L. So we, we will chop all these torus in a, in agents of size L. Uh, so this is one such agent. So let me call this agent uh, X. And then uh, uh, we can look at the restriction of H. Uh, 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 so we can, we can look at the restriction of H uh, where, let me, let me write two agents. Uh, we can look at the restriction of H in which all uh, terms uh, of the Hamiltonian that interact across the boundary of these agents uh, uh, is, is, uh, are, are cut off. So, so that would be H bar uh, that restricts 
that cuts interaction between the agents. That cuts interactions between agents. And then this Q uh, is, the, is, the, is the Fermi projection. So Q is Fermi of this, of this H that, 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 that has this interaction cut. Uh, between the agents. Of course, you need to construct the agents very, very carefully, uh, 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 um, so that so that it includes the right eigenvalues uh, that it, that you that you want to consider. Okay, I think uh, I am running out of time, so um, I think this is all what I wanted to say, and I will. I don't think I would have time for notes, so I skip notes. Uh, and uh, and all I wanted to say, I wanted to show many examples uh, of adiabatic theory with the focus that you know if you find a continuous uh, family of projection that 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 somehow is connected to your evolution, uh, 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 then then that that's that's nearly always uh, 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 you know uh, will lead to the to, to to an adiabatic theorem for the for the setting. And I showed uh, many examples. So there was I think the first very first example was adiabatic theorem without gap condition. And then I showed two recent examples from my work. Um, one was for adiabatic theory for many body systems and then adiabatic theory for disordered systems. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Martin, for, for this really beautiful and uh, inspiring talk. Um, are there questions from the audience? Actually, I, I have one that maybe I would like to start. Uh, sorry, I missed uh, in, the in, the, in the construction you were sketching at the end. What is the feature of these regions that you are defining? Sorry, I missed that part. So what, what, what are they good for? Uh, what is the feature of these regions? Yes, so, 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 um, so in, this, in this interval, uh, uh, in, in, the, in this inter so you have this energy E, uh, maybe I should skip to the same. So you, you have this energy E, and we, since we are on a finite torus, uh, uh, everything is discrete. All, all you know, the, the the spectrum is just lots of discrete eigenvalues, and many of them are around this energy E. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and you 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 start collecting them in the boxes in such a way okay. that that if you if you start you know so here would be here would be phi that is that is that is um, that is eigenvalue uh, of the of the Hamiltonian at zero. Uh, with some energy that is close to e tilde and e minus e tilde is small. So, so you start collecting uh, all eigenvectors uh, with energy uh, close to this energy e. And now as you, as you, start, as you start moving, as you start adding the perturbation, uh, this, this, uh, this, this eigenvectors will, will, will start moving, but you hope that, that, that they will start that they will stay localized in some in some sign box that they would not move out of a box. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be more of them, right? So so there may be another one close by, so that they start hybridized with each other, so they start to talk to each other. Uh, and there may be some far away that they are close to energy, but but because they are far away, they they don't hybridize. Mm -hmm. uh, so 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 these boxes collect all those. Um, all those eigenvectors that as the evolution keeps moving as a fixed epsilon and beta would hybridize and leaves out those that would not. So these boxes collect the right eigenvalues that hybridize together as the evolution moves and leaves out those that won't. That, that, that's how these boxes are created. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And um, other questions from the audience? Yes. Yes. So I think this is related on I, so, talking about this adiabatic theory for disordered systems, uh, I first thought that the difficulty was a physical one, because uh, if you imagine changing the parameter slightly, then that mean, look, for example, if you have localized state, localized state may jump from here to here like this continuously, so uh, you cannot have anything like, like adiabatic theory. That's what I imagined first, but you, you said that you can. Uh, prove uh, adiabatic theory. So, you you are uh, absolutely correct. So I was uh -huh. I was focusing on the on the certain you know uh, point of view, but that's absolutely the physical phenomena. So so uh -huh. so the the physical phenomena is 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 what they called uh, uh, dynamical hybridization, 
uh, that 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 you have you know you 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 have two sides far away. Hmm. Uh, so so two sides that are far away. Uh, that that would that that, uh, that 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 goes through energy crossing. So so this would be, this would have energy e left. This would be energy e right. And if 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 I if I if I uh, as the as the s moves, um, these two energies. If I would if I if they uh, if 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 the two systems are independent, then these two energies cross. Hmm. So 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 without uh, if these two systems are moving independently, these two energies cross. But energies never cross. So, so, so what in what what happens in reality is is that uh, that these two eigenvalues have avoided crossing, and and if you look at at the crossing, so if this co avoided crossing is very small, uh, the 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 corresponding eigenfunctions, you know, change from you know uh, the far away. The corresponding eigenfunctions are localized here, and here, but 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 at that crossing. And the corresponding eigenfunctions are are um, you know superpositions of uh, here and here, uh, plus and minus superpositions. That's what happens at the crossing. So the so the so the so the eigenfunctions delocalize if you go through such crossings, mm -hmm. and you see such crossing all the time as you change the Hamiltonian because because there is this randomness and so so these crossings are all over the place. And 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 now the, the the key analytical feature, and that's why we can't allow epsilon to go way to zero. Epsilon in this theorem is it's not a limit epsilon to zero, but but uh, but it's it's only you know the perturbation it ca can't be too small compared to the how big is the mm -hmm. perturbation. Mm -hmm. And 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 exactly physically what happens that that you you get a good enough count. Of 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 which as in the real time evolution, not in the spectra of flow, which is very discontinuous, but in the real time evolution, which of the which of the uh, which of the eigenvalues move through the crossing is if this was a non-avoided crossing. So they in the real time evolution they just cross following uh, their own energy, and which of the eigenvalues. Uh, Follow the follow the spectral line, mm -hmm. and exactly the eigenvalues that follow the spectral line, so they that do the hybridization, they live inside these boxes. Mm -hmm. So so this is the this this is finding the correct scale on which on which at given epsilon, the 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 evolution hybridizes uh, uh, the eigenfunctions, but they don't go out of that boxes because on that scale the evolution would just not follow uh, the the spectral uh, uh, the spectral eigenfunctions. Yeah, thank thank you. I I cannot say that I understood, but it sounds very very clever. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> uh, Martin actually I had another question, um, if I may. Uh, so the, can does the result also allow you to say something about linear response or validity of Kubo formula or the like? Yeah, yeah, it proves uh, it proves Kubo formula for disordered systems. Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 immediate corollary. So the moment you have adiabatic theorem, the immediate corollary is that you get Kubo formula for disordered systems. Hmm. I see. Uh, other questions from the audience? Um, does not seem to be the case. So let's thank Martin again for the very nice presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, whoever wants to stay, we can have a little chat with Martin uh, more informal and non-recorded. Thank you, Martin. <laughs>